the end venditos uh shit flicks uh, uh, mayamo david e teamo david no teamo matt david yes. what are you doing i am catering to our latin american audience hold up well our three major audiences is the u.s the uk and india that's why i'm trying to expand out here all right Ghetto with El Programo, El Ducho. So, oh, um, we owe El Wacho, El Cinemo, Tadeo. Oh, dear God, this is racist, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn it. It's a little bit. I'm sorry. Yeah. Aren't you supposed to be like the moral base that we have for the show, so I go over the top and you keep us grounded? You I'm know? also the Thought naive that was the, one. It was the idea that we had there, you know? What's the name of the movie, man? Columbian Connection. Columbian Connection. Yeah, it sucked. It's boring. All right. Shot weird. What have you done? Fuck. Fuck all of you. All right. So I picked this movie. Yes. I have nothing. It's blow. My hands are clean. Well, not really, but then again, you can say any drug drug movie can be like blow. Well, no, that's one of the right. reasons why it was given not that great of reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, but we won't get into that. Plot? Plot. 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 <laughs> Jack Hooks is a cop who was framed by his ex-partner and put in jail because of it. Two years later, he gets out and he wants to help the DEA catch his ex-partner. Uh, well, he doesn't want to help. But he's forced he wants to help. He wants, he wants to get freedom. out of jail, yeah. And I, I get that. So I get he, that. he gets out of jail and he has to make this run to Columbia. Oh, 1974. Pick up 40,000 pounds of weed. 40,000 pounds of weed from Columbia and get back to the drop-off point where the DEA will then capture Rossi, the ex-partner. So he puts together a team, they go to Columbia, but... Shit goes down, obviously, and something goes wrong, and in he the end... steals somebody's wife. In the end, it ends up just being a general, like, fight to survive and get out of there, and then revenge plot in the end, once his entire crew is basically killed in front of him. And nothing of interest happens. The entirety of the movie. Done. <laughs> do do do. Yep, that's it. Um, let's just go... Point by point, I guess. There's the only way to do it. All right, well, let's start with the acting of Jack Hooks. <laughs> Have you Just ever seen a wall? Flat. <laughs> this is what it looks yeah. like if a wall was acting. Yeah. It's, oh. it's not, and not just by size. I mean, he was a bigger guy, but he was just like, I can't believe you're doing this to me, Rossi. You know what? Uh, where is they? Are they dead? The only time he, dead. the only time he ever showed emotion For, was um, he was he was strapped in the was, swamp. He was strapped down in the swamp, unable to escape. Crocodiles were coming up, <gasps> and he's screaming for help. But then, as soon as somebody shows up, he's like, "Yeah, thanks." It's he's like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, hey, thanks for that. Yeah, I got to do what a man's got to do. Give me a pair of sunglasses so I can hide my eyes. Sunglasses, and cigarettes. What? It was a bland character. He's I really, your, I didn't care at all. I think he's basically your most generic hero character possible. This wasn't even really a generic hero character. He was just... I didn't root for him. I didn't root for anybody. The only people I rooted for was the young guy who was called Chicken Man. Chicken Man. One of his uh, team. And also Mike. Mike. His other team. And yeah. longtime friend. They're the only interesting characters. Why? Yeah. Because they actually they had character. I mean, like, crazy, right? Even though all the rest of the uh, the crew members actually had were like stereotype characters and whatnot, mm -hmm. they're still interesting to watch. The main characters though were so boring. Let me go over his crew. You had the gun guy. You had the driver. You saw through nah, man. He saw some things. You had the hands got stuff. And he got eaten by crabs. The mechanic guy who's black eye with an eye patch. And from Jamaica, the new guy, the one who everyone's just like, oh, you're a chicken man, you got skinny little legs. So, um, what, what are we gonna? What well, now? Uh, the when it comes down to, uh, yeah, I don't, it, it, there's okay, let's talk about Mike because Mike's the most interesting character. Mike, Mike's Mike is the fine. driver. 
he's the one who's the longtime guy, and I guess he's technically driving the boat, even though it's the other guy's boat. Yeah, I, I guess it's I because know. he's he's been the, a boat driver before. And he's, he's been done. around, man. He all these guys have seen some things and some stuff. Yeah, but I, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is like this is literally as generic as you can get. Mm. I mean, like, I, I thought the remake of The Italian Job was more interesting than this. Which actually, to be honest, it was fun because there were a lot of really great actors in that. When but. it came down to these characters, I think the biggest issue was they were so straight-up formulaic. When it got, I we, love how we go back yeah, and I know, forth. I hate it. All right, we, we, you might have seen by this point, if you guys have, followed, have actually followed the show... Uh, that we yeah, that jump back and forth between liking when movies do the formula and also dislike it. And it depends on the several things. It de- it's a, there is a difference between a movie following a formula or different elements following six, bleh, bleh, specific formulas. Yeah. Now, characters following a specific characterization formula... The archetypes. Can, it, it can get really boring. Like, th- if you find a movie with a basic overall... A story arc that has it's just a formula story you can still get creative with all the rest of the pieces. A, a perfect example of how this movie did it wrong with characters. Rossi was opened up. Opened up as a dirty cop who double crossed his partner. And For they, no reason in the beginning. And they tried to, well it's because he was afraid he was going to rap. Yeah but he, he, he then at the end the filmmakers tried to make it a twist when they double-crossed again so that he would get all the money and leave them all dead. Bitch, if your character already did it once and you're following that archetype, there's no surprise when he does it again. At all. Zero surprise. (laughs) I really... (laughs) Oh, let's move on. Okay. uh, Do we want to talk about the rest of the crew members or do we want to move to the Colombians? The Colombians, like, they're only... There's, like, three only worth mentioning. There is Vuezo, Vuego. I, I don't know. I don't I, know. I, I apologize. I don't know their names. He is the I barely leader. know any of the other people's names. He is the leader. He runs all the land. He's the ringleader. He's, he's the Pablo Escobar of this yeah. situation. And he's, as you expect from most drug dealers in popular culture, totally fucking nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I will say one thing, though. When they actually go to this area in Colombia, it gets really grisly with a couple of the people oh, yeah. who were uh, potheads who were dropping weed and whatnot in different We need to talk about that. That, that. We'll get to that. That was ridiculous. We'll but the thing is, at the same time, the execution scenes... All right, one, I don't know if half the blood in this movie was actually CGI or something like that. It was way too red. Oh, it was like wow. paint. It was like... It was like watching Suspiria again. Like, the colors were, like, unbelievably vivid. I'm like, guys, come on. Either you guys are getting really nutrient and, and, and enriched foods or something. Or, I you, or, you're, paint. or you're radiated. Like, so that's the only way that this will work here. Um, but yeah, when so they fall out shit. When they got to Columbia, like, the guy walked off the boat. It was like, I don't know, a few shots of literally the pot plants. And then, or maybe it was reverse order. do 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 he gets out of the it jeep. It looks like Jurassic Park. It literally mimics the shot. It's like, he takes off his glasses. It's like, welcome to Jurassic Park. It's like, welcome to Columbia. And I don't know. It's actually even better. We should just get a clip of that. Oh, we can't. But at the same time, it's like, get a clip of that and just start playing the Colombian theme oh. from Scarface. Ah. Being interesting. Um, anyway. They're remaking uh, that, by Once the way. you got to Columbia, though, it was like either a shot of just like some uh, marijuana plants, and then the next thing you see is like two human pinatas. Yeah. They're getting chopped apart by machetes. It got a little bit gruesome there. I don't think as gruesome as it could have been. Like, it could have been. You so got a more. Colombian drug lord, man. You can go they're, all they're the They're notorious way. for the brutality. But they just showed two guys from an early scene. Especially in the up. 70s. This was like their heyday. Yeah. Um, what else do we want? Oh, uh, Emilio, his right-hand man henchman. Kind of, uh, you know, kind of like, you know, really yeah. curlier. He's got, like, him. Matt's hair, except much curlier and black. And he's, he's, just, Jerry Curls. he's just ready to fuck shit up in a moment's notice, man. He's like, yeah, he, he's the most intelligent character in the entirety of the movie. He figures out the whole fucking plot. Yeah. and it's all just, it's by bad writing. Don't get me wrong here. It's by bad writing, say 
the whole reason that he even suspected something was because the one guy said that the Yankees were playing today. And he happened to know, because he's a huge Yankees fan, that the Yankees definitely weren't playing today. So thus, he went back to the phone that he had just called up. Star 69 did. And went to the operator and said, please reconnect me. And then it reconnected. Reconnected to the fucking DEA office? That's terrible writing, but All right. from his character perspective, he's intelligent. To be honest and whatnot, and this is only really a nitpick here because, you know, just the way that it is, when it comes down to actual people calling in for this type of shit, mm -hmm. they don't call the DEA. They call their handler specifically. Departed. And whatnot. And, like, basically along those lines, but, like, there's a lot of differences here. And the thing is, though, I know this is the 70s, I know it's back in the day, but at the same time, there's no reason why someone is that stupid. You want to know how we knew it was the 70s if they didn't tell us flat out? Yeah, Everyone man. had their handlebar mustache. Everyone's smoking weed. Uh, well, no, 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 no. It's the very beginning of the movie. No, no, no. Everyone who's evil is smoking weed. Everyone who's good's got their cigarettes and booze. Yeah. Obviously the yeah. good guy. It's like, all right, these these are like Miami Vice people that just drink hard liquor, chain smoke, and whatnot. So we'll, we'll get them. We'll get them. The last person that's Colombian that we really need to mention, I think her name was Elisa, but I could be wrong. She is the love interest, obviously, because we haven't mentioned a female She's yet. no Penelope Cruz. She, the only reason she served was as Vuevo's, um, like, prisoner pretty much, and then Jack comes up and he's like, hey, I'm American and sexy. Would you like some freedom inside you? And she says yes. Yeah, pretty much. And they <laughs> fuck and she's like, take me back to America. You know I can't do that. Freedom's for me. Take me back to America. And all right, whatever, if you say so. <laughs> Basically, because he, are you, are, I'm sorry, one guy, one guy, who in the right, besides you're playing Grand Theft Auto, who in the right mind would go back to a compound in the middle of Colombia and try to just take down an entire right, cartel by that. themselves. Here's, here's what happened. They in come the, okay. back. Hold on, hold on. Here's what happened in the very end. At the very end, he gets back to the his handler, and he was like, "You're late." And he's like, "Shit went down." And they're like, "All right, well, you got three more days to kill this guy, or else you're back on the most wanted list." And so then, like immediately afterwards, he goes and kills this guy. And it's like, "Oh, okay. I guess he finished his plot. Cool. Everything's done." But then he decides, nope, not done yet. The movie. Hitches a ride back to Jeez. Cuba. God. Not Cuba. Why do I keep saying Cuba? It's because you want to watch no, 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 Scarface. No, no, no. It's because that's you where... Watch it's because, remember, in the very opening text, they said uh, the I was that one oh, channel in between, between Cuba. Cuba and, I think, okay. Florida. That's where I'm getting it from. So it was between, like, Cuba and Jamaica or something, something like, like that. that. I can't remember exactly where. But anyway... Um, for, give me for my geography. He goes by geometry. He goes back to uh, Colombia, and he just starts trying to go Rambo on them all, pretty much. He just walks in, and he's like, all right, explosion's going to go off in three. Good enough. I'm here to kick ass and chew blue bubble gum and all that bubble gum. Pretty much. He pretty much glad that that. He ended up killing the drug lord, rescuing the girl, going very, off in his boat. Very commando and whatnot. It's like, Rawr. All right, that's it for the plot. But he still had that flat face. Oh, yeah, dead all the time. Even when he's, like, fighting fist to fist with the guy, he's like... Y'all move, I'm creep. Here. I'm here for the paycheck. You uh, cannot pay me enough to make me feel interested in this. This is not an Oscar role. All right, he, what we need to talk about were the most unused characters. The Colombians, or at least Captain Morgan, as his name is, and Rossi were originally, before they used this crew, were using a bunch of potheads to move the pot. Let's talk about these potheads, shall we? When you are doing a job that requires attention and finesse, what is one thing you probably shouldn't do? Get high before you do it. I was going to say kill prostitutes, but yours works too. Yeah. So, yes, get high. But the thing is, simply... The, the thing is, when it comes down to these, these these characters, I know what it's supposed to be illustrating that these people were incompetent, so thus yeah. this person was brought in. That's why they needed the well, other people. But at the same time, though, all these people were, were, were 
playing themselves off as hippies, you know, the whole, like, thin-ass headbands oh, yeah. and shit like that. And they're all smoking weed while holding some machine guns in the first one. There was the one girl, and like, the, the only <laughs> hippie chick. She's just standing there, it's like, you hear that? And then, like, the Coast Guard comes out. You're stoned, man. The Coast Guard comes out. And then she just out. starts yeah. out. Like, I mean, I'm sorry, dude. No, no, you, you, you're not going to be stoned enough to want to spray and kill Coast Guard. No, you dropped the set. It was like, dude, sorry. That shit, the herb opening up, that is the definition. That's Patty of, her shit. That's right the there. definition of flower power. <laughs> it's just like flower power, motherfucker. But the second time that they did it, there were these two, two stoners guys. hotboxing a plane. A tiny little cargo <clears throat> plane. And then what they ended up doing was dropping the weed on a pair of cops. No, 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 no. Here's where the issue arose. Well, they did do that. They though. dropped the weed from the plane and it landed in the water. And that's why they were like, you shouldn't be dropping our shit in the water, man. We need better people than this. That's the whole reason that existed. No, yeah, I'm serious. That happened. Because there was also cops there. That's why they dropped it on. They, they missed... No, it's because they missed the spot. They, yeah. they, they overshot. So, like, there were two cops that were there trying to catch poachers. And they ended up having a bunch of weed dropped on them in the first place. And that's what caused them to majorly the thing, fuck up. The thing is, it landed in the water. That was a conversation that happened between the two guys. And they're like, it landed in the water. They fucked up. And he's like, I don't let fuck ups happen in my place. And that's why those two were the human pinatas. Full circle. Goes around. I don't care. Like, yeah, it didn't matter. See, like, uh, alright, even though, as I said, like, Blow has, is very polarized and whatnot, that I actually feel like is a good movie because not only, if this movie actually was a true story or based at all on a true story as it claims in the very yeah, beginning. Yeah, I said that. I forgot about that. I mean, I don't know how true any of the elements of this movie are. I doubt that there's a lot, but at the same time, I have no idea. Uh, but at the same time, Blow is the same way. It was based on a true story. George Young, who's the main person, is actually still in jail. He gets out this this year or next year, actually. I'm not sure. Uh, but the thing is, though, that was a movie that was trying to encompass all aspects of the specific character. Shit, that is some good stuff. Oh, you're back. Hi. Uh, we had to take our medicine. Allergies, asthma, star spring, hay fever, that whole thing. ADHD, maybe. What were you talking about? George Young or something? Yeah, the thing is, with the movie Blow, is that the way that the film was structured, it was entirely around the character. This movie literally just had the plot, and the main character was a device for that plot. Right. Nothing that the character did made me care about him whatsoever, so no scenes were ever tense. I'm like... I don't care if this character dies. Actually, the part where they where they are all lined up and all the guys start shooting him, I thought he did get killed. I'm like, so that's the end for his character, right? Because Mike was still alive. Mike was the cool yeah. one. Yeah, he was the one. So I'm like, oh, so we're going to follow Mike for the rest of the yeah. movie. I'm like, oh, no, not so much no. Mike. <laughs> Mike lived. Don't get it wrong. Mike yes. lived. But the other guy lived, too. But at the same Jack, time, I, I've, lost, I've lost interest. I've lost interest. <laughs> what are you going to do? All right, um, let's talk about the writing and just how fucking boring it is. That's it. Yeah, that's it. It, that's it. It, it, it. There's not really much else to s describe. Because yeah, well, okay, let me put in my two cents then. It, it's very stock standard. It's almost like yeah. it, if, if Brendan Fraser was in the lead role and whatnot, this would be considered a parody of these types of movies. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, it's um, just, overall, for this movie's writing, it's just a matter of, it's so, so stock standard. From the characters to their dialogue, I think the most original... To the blocking. Yeah. And even the shot setup. I know it's cinematography, technically, but it was like the most standard two shots. Constantly. The one thing is, I, I, me personally, I thought it was played way too close. Because right. the shots were always like right up here. Well, you see, your complaint with that was it was action movie shots, but there was no action. There. Yeah, well, the thing is, that, like, it's supposed to... Close-ups. Close-ups, mind you. When I get more closely to you... It's supposed to add intensity to the stare that I'm having. Or it's supposed to add intensity to whatever emotion is supposed to be on screen. The problem is, with this movie, it uses it all the goddamn time, but it's not trying to convey anything. It's just up close all the damn time. This is like, this is like a movie trying to blur out everything except for one thing on the screen that... Oh, wait, no, that's done already. Sorry. 
It's a Dark City reference, but yeah, okay. at the same time, <laughs> not sorry. Uh, either way. All right, but yeah, no, this was just so stock standard. The only thing that really wasn't stock That's standard true. in the entirety of the film was the fact that, like, Emilio's character managed to figure it out through that method. Like, it's also very fast. Yeah, it's it didn't so, waste a whole lot. That's of time. the problem. Anything that's interesting, they just speed right the fuck through. Everything that's so to be honest, boring and normal, it's just like let's spend as much time as we possibly can developing this love interest the, that we know. They is didn't going do to that. They didn't even do that. They they only had like one two conversations before they fucked. So like they only had one. Nothing was developed. In no, no, this. no, 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 no. They had one or two conversations, but they spent so long just staring at each other. As I said, nothing yeah. happened. Like, there was no happened. characterization in this movie. Nothing was believable. Nothing made me care about any of these characters. Pacing was fucked up. Then. Just everything about the film just didn't... It didn't flow. The moment the movie started, I'm like, I don't feel right about the film I already. I don't feel anything. It's not that I don't feel anything. It's just also the fact that it's just... It, nothing jived with me at all. Nothing whatsoever. And that that's really hard. Usually I find something. Yeah. Something whatsoever in the movie to like, but this movie, like, I, it's it's very every George Biddle. Here, it's very George Biddle. Here's the here's the problem I have with it. Are we going final thoughts now? I guess so. Okay. Do you have anything to say then? Cause My final know. thoughts is simply the matter is that this movie is just forgettable. Like, I'm going to forget before we do the next episode. I'm already going to forget. Okay. Uh. Yep. And you know the congruency of that, so oh, it's yeah. going to be a very short amount yeah. of time. Um, all right. My final thoughts here. The, the one problem that really struck me was the lack of motivation for anything anybody did. Maybe it's just because I'm, like, technically an actor. Technically. So it's... it's it's. I try to get into the characters' minds a lot more than just your average movie watcher. He'll just accept what's on the screen. I try to get into the minds. Every character in here, yes, they have their motivations, but he never really gathered that that was actually what they're going for. I always wanted there to be some deeper underlying meaning, which every character should have. But no, they literally wanted this to all be face value. And yes, that's all right for your generic action film, where you literally just want it to be like, here's the most basic plot in the world, so we can get to the guns. But the fact that they put off the guns until the last third and only used it like three times... It wasn't even all that impressive. No, it wasn't. I don't feel like that's what they were trying to do. This was much more of a heist film, as I said in the beginning, where it's like, it's more about the planning and the job itself than it is the action. But this ain't heat. You ain't heat! Yeah. So, that's, that's one of the things I have. And also, Rossi's character, his motivation is non-existent. I guess he's motivated by greed. Hey. Greed, hey. technically. But the, no character ever ever in a realistic environment would act as evil as he did. He recognizes that everything he does is just bad. Like, no redeeming factors to it at all. He acknowledges that fact. No character would ever do that. They would always try to justify themselves in some way. The Joker. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. He's doing it because he doesn't believe that order and stuff is real. He's justifying that chaos is the real way to go. Ross is just like, I'm a Ross dick. Ross is just like, hey, look at me. I'm a fucking cock. I am a giant throbbing dick. And he flat out says it. He's like, that's what Jack's character says at one point. Like, you know what I like most about you, Rossi? Nothing. And he's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. <laughs> no, yeah, because there's nothing to like. That's actual dialogue. Yeah. Actual dialogue. I'm like, wow, man. Okay. I mean, I have no doubt that you, they're... To be fair with that, there's probably at least a couple people out there like that, but... I'm sure, but you, when you're screenwriting, you're, I'm not saying you have to make them a likable character. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that there needs to be, even if it's just the smallest little thing, some way that I can empathize a little bit with them. Even if I have to go full-on sociopathic to reach that point, I need something to latch on to. It's proper conveyance. That's all I have to say about characters. Like he said, the flow, it just doesn't work, but I he knows more about why Jacked that flow. He knows why that doesn't work more than I do. Character wise, it's fun. So, yeah. And really I hate doing these, but we have to. 
This movie, though it did not fully condone the use of marijuana, it certainly didn't condemn it either. So we here at Chiplix have to take this opportunity to condemn, in full use, marijuana and other drugs like it. So here we are. Have you, uh, have you guys met Editor Matt? Yeah, he takes over the titles and I don't really have any control over that. He's also kind of a dick, too, if you couldn't tell. Yes. Yes, you are. Well, you are a dick. That's, it's, it's a fact. It's not an opinion. 